don't know if you can see her over here. Hi! Welcome back to my channel. Our video today is going to be a Q&A. Uh, because I didn't really know what else to do, but I figured it would be a good way to kind of get back into um, the swing of making videos. Not that I ever really made that many to begin with, but you know. So I asked you guys on Instagram and Twitter to go ahead and ask me any questions, whatever you want. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. There's no like general order to like any of these questions. They're just kind of whatever. Um, so yeah, let's get into them. I also, my phone is recording, so I have to keep looking at the questions on my computer monitor. <laughs> really professional. The first question is, what kind of sweets do you like? I personally don't have like a huge sweet tooth, but I absolutely love dark chocolate. Question number two is, what is the tattoo on your neck and where did you get it? Um, I'm assuming they mean the tattoo on the back of my neck. It is actually a tattoo that goes from the base of the back of my neck down to mid -may, mid -may, midway down the middle of my back. I'll see about inserting like a picture of it somewhere on here, but um, yeah, it goes down my spine. Um, and it is actually the phases of the moon. This tattoo was done by Sarah Fable. I will link her Instagram down below. She's actually done the majority of my tattoos and she's one of my favorite artists. Her work is incredible and she's super nice, super sweet, very down to earth, um, and her work is just amazing. So I absolutely recommend checking her out. Um, she's in the LA area, I believe. Um, I think she's moved, but I think she's still in LA, but um, you can check that out on her Instagram for sure. I basically went to her and I wanted the phases of the moon down my spine, but I wanted peonies incorporated with it because uh, peonies are some of my favorite flowers. And I just basically let her do whatever she wanted with that concept and she came up with something amazing as usual. Um, I love all her work, so I was not disappointed. Do you use tarot cards? And if so, what set do you own? I actually own a couple sets, but in this picture, um, that they were specifically referencing to on my Instagram. Uh, I was using the Wild Unknown tarot deck. Next question is, I would really like it if you could recommend a Netflix series or a Steam game that is chill, has nice vibes. I believe that's what they were asking. Um, unfortunately, I don't really watch many Netflix series lately, um, except for like, uh, murder documentaries and stuff like that, which isn't exactly relaxing. One game that I recently played that is available on Steam um, and was so chill and so fun and so relaxing was um, Yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. It's kind of a tongue twister. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, shout out to Kiro. Thank you so much for introducing me to that game. It is so so cute and so relaxing. It's kind of an open, no, okay. It's kind of like a cross between Harvest Moon and Zelda games um, because it is open world and you can go around and do different tasks um, at your own time, at your own pace to kind of gradually unfold the story of the game. Um, but you can also set up little farms and collect little animals um, and make products and stuff like that from your farm. Oh my god, you can nuzzle animals. It is the cutest thing ever. If anything, get the game to nuzzle all of the animals because that in and of itself is rewarding enough to play the game. It made me so happy. Why did you start drawing? Was it for fun as a career or something else? I initially started drawing, I believe because my mom drew. Both of my parents went to architect school, but uh, when I was younger, um, I used to see characters in books, like Disney books and stuff like that, that I wanted toys of to like play with. They never made toys like I wanted, man. So I would ask my mom if she could draw them for me because she could just look at the picture and draw them out. Um, so she would look at, find a good pose that the character was in and then just draw it onto a piece of paper and sometimes she would color it and then she would cut it out for me and then I would have these little paper dolls to play with. So I thought that was absolutely amazing. Like she was so cool, so talented and that just really inspired me to kind of take up drawing on my own. So 
I was drawing since I was really young. I think it was really cool that both of my parents were more creatives, um, so they really helped nurture that um, interest that I had, I guess. I, however, never had the intention on becoming an artist as a career path um, for the longest time because I thought like all I had heard about were starving artists, you know, like who wants to do that? Like nobody, nobody wants to starve. So even though throughout like all of my uh, grade schooling, uh, people would be like, you should be an artist, you should be an artist when you grow up because like literally all I would do was draw. Uh, in class. <laughs> yeah, I would always say like, no, this is, I just do this for fun, um, until I figured out you could actually go to school for like being an artist in games and movies and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my god, that like changed my entire view on art. Because uh, I initially, like, I was just like, okay, I guess I'll be a vet because, like, I like animals. Um, that was, like, my la second to last year of high school, that's what I was planning. And then my last year, I discovered, um, like, game schools and stuff like that, game development. And that completely changed, and so I ended up, like, taking a 3D class um, at the in my last year of high school. And... What were your favorite projects or pieces to work on both professionally and personally? I can't say I have a favorite project professionally because uh, I didn't really get to work on that many. I think the projects where we had smaller teams and I got to kind of, which were most of the, the projects that I got to work on professionally. Um, working on smaller teams I think made it a lot easier and a lot more fun for you to be able to put some of yourself into the project. But personally, I think the, the pieces that feel most rewarding to me are the ones where I just, I don't really have any outside input or influence other than just maybe listening to music and painting what comes. All right, this next question is, what is your second favorite color or third favorite lizard? And they say, it's silly, I know, but when was the last time someone asked you what your second or third favorite thing anything was? <laughs> Which is very true, I don't think anyone has ever asked me that before. Color-wise, I'm kind of weird with colors. Um, I don't really have like a particular favorite color. For me, it kind of depends more on like what the color is for. This can sound so ridiculous. When it's like clothing, or appearance wise I tend to like blacks and grays and whites and like neutral colors but then when it's like an object or something I really like like a soft pastel pink so like phone cases uh, or like when I'm in a cutesy mood like my, my, the wallpaper on my phone will be like super kawaii pink cats I'm sorry, it's such like such an extra answer. <laughs> so I guess my second favorite color would probably be like soft pastel pink. Yeah. Third favorite lizard? Probably a gecko of some form because I don't really know about any other lizards other than geckos, so. Next question is, do you ever mourn a project when it's finished? and then find moving on to the next project bittersweet. Does this have any effect on any tendencies you have towards procrastination? And if so, what some things you do to help curb that? So let's start with the first half of this question, which is, do you ever mourn a project when it's finished and then find moving on to the next project bittersweet? The ones where you're like working on it for years. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, Cause especially like when you get to know the team and you've spent so long on this game or whatever. I've only worked in games, so you've spent so long putting everything into this game, like blood, sweat, and tears, and then when it's over, it's really awesome to see everyone's reactions and see that it's actually out there, it's done. This thing you've been working on for so long is completed, and it's really cool to see everyone enjoying it, but you do kind of miss the, you know, what was. I think it's hard not to, um, I know some people experience it really hard. I haven't, I don't think I've worked on a project that intensely that it uh, bothered me for an extended period of time. Um, it was more just kind of like I missed the team and I missed the working part of it with everyone. So I guess the answer is yes, I have felt that before. Does this have any effect 
on any tendencies you had towards procrastination and if so what are some things you can do to help curb that so i'm assuming this is like procrastination on like finishing something because you don't want it to end for me at least especially when i'm working on my own projects i try to keep myself constantly going forward and not back that's really hard to do um, because i think as humans we we it's really hard for us to not think of something especially something that we enjoyed so much uh, living in your memories is just kind of something that we do. Um, so I try really, really hard to not look back anymore because I used to do that, especially through like college and stuff. I looked at my older work and I wondered why isn't it good anymore and I would continue to get better but I would look back at my old stuff and still like my old stuff better. And I think the way to curbing that is to just keep working on making your next thing better. Whether it is or not, you know, like, you're never gonna be perfect, you're always, you're gonna make mistakes, stuff isn't gonna be as good as the last thing you made, but that shouldn't hinder you from continuing to try and make yourself better and trying to make your next project and your next, next work better. Um, don't hang on to those old projects or those old pieces or, um, those old memories, they can, they should stay there. They should stay memories, happy memories. I think it is, it's really bad if you, it's really bad for your workflow to constantly look back. Um, so instead, just put that energy into, of course, it's good to mourn the project. That's completely fine. Um, everyone should take some time to kind of get over that and grieve that process because even like events in your life, projects were events in your life and you should take some time to get over that um it's okay to be sad but don't let that hinder your workflow that's when it's getting to be too much and that's when you should take that energy and um put it into the next thing that you make and just try to make that even better and even more fun and even more exciting okay so the next question there are a couple of questions in this next question so we'll start with this first part um, which is, what is your favorite time to draw? I think early morning is my favorite time to work, uh, even though I don't, especially lately, wake up early enough to experience that time, um, which makes me a little sad, but I think I'm most productive early in the morning when like everyone else is asleep and it's just quiet and it's just me. I don't know, I just feel very w relaxed and um, I focus better. What are all the art mediums that you've tried? I have tried a lot. I have tried uh, sketching, inking, painting, so like acrylic paints, oil paints, watercolor, sculpting, uh, both traditionally and digitally, 3D modeling, I've done texturing, animation, both 2D and 3D. I'm sure there's more stuff. I needle felting, I'm sure there's a billion more things that I could try. Um, the funny thing is when it comes to anything but drawing, I have like absolutely no patience. Like people in my streams are like, how do you have that much patience to put like into your, every little detail in every painting they do? And it's like, this is literally all the patience that I have. Um, and then the last part of this question is, do you prefer indoor or outdoor sketching? Um, I think depending on the area, I would probably prefer outdoor, especially if it's in like a nice cloudy, rainy area, like foresty, um, really quiet and peaceful. Not a lot of people, but as of right now where I live, it's too dang hot to go outside most of the time, and there are too many bugs. So, <laughs> uh, I guess right now indoors makes me happiest. Next question is... What kinds of jobs and clients do you get from this profession? I'm a high school graduate considering going to school for arts, but I am a little naive about the whole industry in general. Oh no, my computer went to sleep. Okay. Uh, I would like to know what you loved and what you hated. Honestly, this is probably better suited for an entire video on itself. Um, so if you guys are interested in hearing my viewpoints, I was actually planning on doing this video last year when I first started this channel. My viewpoint is probably pretty limited in the professional standards, or I guess industry standards, but I can give you guys um, how I feel about working in the game industry versus working like solo freelance kind of stuff. But it's kind of a, a 
I ended up not doing it, I think, just because I was too nervous to, I guess, put my viewpoints out there because I am not a seasoned professional or anything like that. Um, however, I have been doing art for a very long time and working with clients. But back to this question. The kinds of jobs and clients you get from this profession are completely dependent upon which area you go into and what job you want. I think that's a little too broad of a question for me to answer specifically. Working in the industry, you obviously need to put more focus on your portfolio um, and creating work that is more geared towards the job that you want. So instead of attracting clients, although this isn't 100% true, like once you get really big, clients do come to you. Um, but <clears throat> Until you get to that point, you have to put more focus into, I think, finding your clients and gearing your work towards the clients that you want to work for. If you are wanting to do more freelance stuff like I am, I think social media is much more important. And this isn't, again, this isn't entirely true. This is just from what I've experienced, but um, putting your everything into like posting very frequently and very often so that way you can attract clients that are interested in your sort of work um, is extremely important. Even in my, my case, I, I did for a while have to go out and search for clients. So it's, it's a really fine line and it's hard to just give a like direct answer towards what you attract because it's entirely dependent upon you, um, what it is that you're doing, your style, your work, like what you want to do, that kind of thing. So it really just depends. And then for the end of this question, it was, I would like to know what you loved and what you hated. Again, that would probably be better suited for a video in its own. I think the thing that I love the most about doing freelance is that I do get to make my own time and I can find my own clients and work with people that are interested in my own stuff. The downsides is you do have to focus a lot on building up your own clientele. Being your own boss means forcing yourself to post all the time, always having content to share with everyone, being very active, being active with other people, making your own friends and friends become clients too, or maybe you can collaborate with them, stuff like that. So. Finding your own work is can be pretty hard, if, especially if you're not motivated or you're not used to doing it on your own. And then in the industry, what I loved, I think I really loved working with other people, which is really fun, like-minded people. Um, but then at the same time, this is also the downside. So that's probably the thing that I disliked as well. I prefer going solo. I think I work better that way. So freelance has worked out much better for me than um, working in a big company or studio. So the next question is a two-parter as well. Um, the first part is, what was the inspiration behind your hair color? That was probably, I don't really know. I think it's ever since my like weeby Inuyasha days, um, I was became a huge fan of white hair. <laughs> I don't know why, I just found it very mystical and very beautiful and very unique. Um, and that interest kind of stayed with me through all of my like artistic career. I was just very fascinated with white haired characters. And they kind of, for me and my brain, like have an association with the moon, which I'm also obsessed with and um, I always have been. So I think it was something that I'd always wanted to do. I'd always wanted to kind of be like one of my characters, I guess, in my wildest dreams. And last year I was finally in a place where I could make that commitment. And so I did, and I don't regret it. Um, although the upkeep is quite exhausting sometimes. Um, so I'm actually thinking of dyeing it back to a natural color, but we'll see when. And then the second part of this question is, what is your favorite weather or environment to draw in? Rain is probably my favorite. Uh, I don't know why the rain is just extremely inspiring to me. Or cloudy days are good too, uh, but mostly rain. And then my favorite environment would probably be waking up early in the morning, like I mentioned earlier, I think that's my most productive period of time. Um, waking up early in the morning, getting like a nice cup of coffee and then coming and sitting in here in my room where I have all my things and everything's nice and clean and organized. I got all my stuff. Um, 
it's rainy outside and nice and cool and I can have like my I don't know if you guys can hear it but I have a candle going over here I also if you hear the piano in the background I apologize that's my mom she plays basically all the time and we just kind of don't notice it anymore but yes just sitting in here with some candles and incense going nice and cozy with like a blanket and my coffee and then just sit down to do some art with some music or listen to like an audiobook some hippy dippy like inspirational writings or something like that and then maybe chatting with some friends while I art just that's like perfect perfect environment I would do that every I hope one day that will just be my everyday yes <laughs> and then the final question is what is your favorite anime I unfortunately don't really watch anime that much anymore I haven't really watched a new anime in years so I tend to be more towards the nostalgia anime like really old stuff so um, Inuyasha was I think the very first anime that I watched that I knew was an anime um, I watched Sailor Moon and uh, what was it? Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z on Toonami back in the day, but that was before I was like, what? This is made in Japan? Oh my god. And my mind was just like blown when I found that out. Yeah, so I, I tend to like the stuff that makes me nostalgic. So, like Sailor Moon, Yu um, Hakusho, Inuyasha, what else did I watch? Wolves Rain, that's kind of not super old, but I liked Wolves Rain as well. Um, and then of course Miyazaki films, Princess Mononoke was one of my biggest inspirations artistically. I'm sure there's more, I can't really think of like an exact one that is my favorite. Maybe if I think about it. No. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's all the questions for today. Um, if you guys have any more. Uh, if you want me to like expand upon anything that I mentioned here, feel free to ask. Um, if you guys want more of these, feel free to let me know. If you have any ideas for the next video, let me know about that too because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get some art going here soon as well so I can get you guys some art walkthroughs too. But I really like just talking with you guys and it's easy to do and um, I think it's fun kind of getting to know you guys more too. So. Maybe down below let me know what your favorite animes are, or um, your thoughts on freelancing, or what is your favorite environment to work in, what is your favorite weather or time of day. Let me know, like feel free to answer any of the questions yourself down below because I would love to know more. Rambled enough for <laughs> one week, I think. I hope you guys like this. Until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye. My coffee is cool today. <laughs>